That all said, before we get into some of the recent political shenanigans, I think it's probably a good idea for us to take another look at Pastor Joel Webin, who's um decided to have some opinions about how elections should happen in the United States, which uh I think we all have some opinions on how elections should happen, right? Like that's a pretty common thing for people to have in America. So maybe let's go ahead and take a look and see what he has to say. But first, the fan art section, beginning with, of course, Galvanized Square Steel. This is from Loudy Cat, said, hopping on the Galvanized Square Steel trend. I'm titling this, when you turn in point, uh, oh, when you turn 0.5 meters squared room into a small livable space for you and your homies. And then apparently the Galvanized Steel is, of course, um, branded with a particular name for extra damage. You know. Anyway, thank you very much for that one. The next one we have here is from Pernia, and uh, there's no context given on this, but holy fucking shit. I, I think I speak for everyone right now when I say that every time Pernia puts pen to paper, they do a fantastic job. So we've got, of course, Neko made Surus here. I, holy fuck. This one is nice. This one is very, very nice. I appreciate it. As always, everybody, thank you all for your fan art submissions. If you want to submit your fan art to the channel and have it shown, then all you need to do is drop it into the fan art section of the Discord, and I will show it in videos as I get the opportunity. That all said, let's go ahead and get into today's video. This one here, this is Pastor Joel Webin. And, uh, He's got some interesting things to say, like I said, first about elections and then about some other stuff. So let's go ahead and give him a listen to. Uh, that in the civil realm, uh, that, that a profession, uh, a Christian, distinctly Christian profession of faith uh, and affirmation is uh, a prerequisite for holding office. I certainly would want to see uh, that in the civil realm, uh, that that a profession, uh, a Christian. So what he wants, please add that big bow to the model. So I don't get control over that, but if Pernia would like to add a big bow to any model that she has worked on for me, then I will gladly use that model and add the big bow. Also, just a quick thing. Anytime a model gets finished, I will use the model uh, for a time afterwards. Like I'm not gonna just not use the model on political streams if new stuff comes in to be used. That said, let's go ahead and, and get over the first bit of this that's very uniquely stupid, right? So America is not a Christian nation. America is a nation of Christians. We have majority Christians here. We get, are very, very culturally Christian in the way that we operate, uh, but we are not a Christian nation. We are not founded to be a distinctly Christian nation. If we were, then we would need to have a conversation about the specific brand of Christianity that we are going for, and nobody is going to agree on that, obviously, right? So when you say that you need as a prerequisite anybody who is trying to work in office, anybody who's trying to get into an office, uh, you desperately need them to affirm the faith of Christianity. I'm sorry, but we are not yet a theocracy. And until we become a theocracy, that should never be a prerequisite. Because as an atheist, a Christian does not speak for my lack of faith. They do not. And even many Christians would point out that there are other Christians that do not speak for their particular brand of faith. This is not saying that I think that a Christian cannot ideally represent me in politics. But when it comes to religiosity, that is an aspect of myself that they cannot ever represent. And as our political representatives need to be as close to an extension of ourselves and our ideals as humanly possible, as long as atheists and Muslims and Jewish people and anyone else of a different variety of flavor of religion happens to be in the United States, then there should be no prerequisite that specifically only Christians get to hold power. But this is actually a retweet of something else. 
by retweet, not Joel retweeting. This is Right Wing Watch retweeting this on top of another retweet to give some context for something. And what they need to give context for is why he thinks that those people should be in power in the first place. Let's go ahead and take a look at a little more of uh, his voids. Saying uh, there will be no Islamic uh, parades. Like, for instance, that, that's, uh, in, in Minnesota, you know, um, that, you know, Islamic, you know, five times a day, uh, public calls to prayer. I would say um, you can have uh, church bells, Christian church bells that everyone in town can hear, including the non-Christians. And they just have to kind of put up with it. It's not, you know, unnecessarily antagonistic. We're church bells, not church sirens, you know, so you're not going out of your way to be a jerk. It's, it's the same thing, my guy. It's the exact same thing. Church bells, church sirens, church dildos, they are all the same thing here. If the public has to deal with it on a consistent basis, then it's it's identical. I'm sorry. It's a pleasant sound, but it is a... It's a pleasant sound to you. Publicly, universally heard sound throughout the day by all the citizens, whether they're Christian or not. But you could not have uh, Islamic siren you know, calls to prayer, even if they were pretty. Uh, you still you still couldn't have them because um, allowing for private worship in the home of a Muslim would be permissible. Uh, but public displays of worship to false gods um, is that's erecting high places. Hold on. So the reason that Christians are allowed to have it, he gives the first reason. It sounds nice, though. The Quran sounds nice to Muslims. OK, and I'm not going to lie. When you actually hear the Quran being read in the musical way that it's typically read over those sirens, like it actually does sound really nice for those who have not heard it before. Here, let me go ahead and one sec. Let me find it here. It sounds nice. Like... I'm not Muslim. I've read the Quran and I don't like what's written in it, but even I can say that that's pleasant. That's pleasant to my ears. I don't I, I don't care. Like the the pleasant argument doesn't work because they are both pleasant. The church bells can be pleasant to you. The reading of the Quran can be pleasant to you. I don't really care about that argument. When you say, "Oh, it is bad to have public faith. You should do that privately where nobody can see you, which also doesn't work for the Muslim faith. It, it doesn't. Worship at home privately does not work for a good chunk of the Muslim faith because when it comes time for prayer, the time for prayer is then. You, you do it then. You make sure that your prayer mat is facing the correct direction and you do your prayers there. And then you're done. It takes up a few minutes, maybe even seconds of your day, depending on what denomination that you are in. And that's it. That's, that's how disruptive it is. To say that, oh, you shouldn't be allowed to do that because something, something false gods. My guy... If we're going to talk about false gods, I'm willing to have that conversation, but you're going to have to prove that yours exists first. I don't want to be antagonist to Christians because I don't think that that's actually a very productive way to go about life. But if we're going to use the argument, one sounds nice, the other doesn't, that's stupid. That, that, that doesn't make any sense. But if we're going to use the secondary argument, one's to a false god, one's not... Again, we have to have the conversation. What brand of Christianity has the real God? What brand of Christianity has the real Jesus, the real Yahweh? Will the real Holy Spirit please stand up? Like, we have to have that conversation. And then subsequently, after we figured out which one is your favorite flavor of Jesus, we now have to have the conversation of, can you prove that one is real? Can you prove that God is real? in a way that would be done to the satisfaction of anyone observing. We can do that with replication, with experimentation. We can do that with a bunch of things. But if the prerequisite for the correct religion, the only one that is allowed to be shown publicly around the United States is it's got to be the real one. Okay, cool. I'm willing to meet you in that arena. Prove God. But of course, Joel's not going to be able to do that because you can't prove God. And typically, that's an okay thing to do. It's a, it's a faith-based religion. 
it's okay for the god there not to be provable to the adherents of the religion. It's the minute that you put in the prerequisite. Oh, this one's the real one. Okay, cool. Now we need it to be provable. Now we now I need you to start proving it. I don't need you to prove it to believe it. I don't need you to prove it to respect your belief in it. But I need you to prove that it's real if you are going to belabor the point that it's only the real faith that gets to be represented and all the fake ones don't. In a nation to false gods and, and God will not bless that. And so it's not even the, the Muslims' best interest for them to have... What does, what does God will bless the nation even mean? In what way is he going to bless the nation? What does that statement mean? It's a nothing statement. The version of what God will bless the nation with changes based on the person who is being asked the question. I don't know what a blessing from God looks like on a nation, and neither do you. It could be any number of things. But if it's like, oh, God blesses the nation, therefore these socioeconomic things happened. What about all the people who actually did those things? There's an old bit in The Simpsons where Bart Simpson is asked to say grace over a meal, uh, and uh, Mr. Burns is actually there as well, strangely. And uh, Bart says grace exactly like this. Dear Lord, we paid for all the food on this table, so thanks for nothing. And that's it. And immediately Mr. Burns responds with, <laughs> Only a child could get away with such blasphemy. And it's, it's, it's a funny bit, but it is a true bit here. Because I have to ask the question, if we're going to also go like, it's in the Muslims' best interest for God to bless the nation so that it's better for them before they burn in hell. Like, if that's going to be the argument, okay, cool. What does a blessing on the nation look like? And how would we differentiate a blessing on the nation completely differently from, I don't know, random socioeconomic factors that we can attribute to human hands? Which one? Which one is it there? Public high places to false gods. He would do well in a temporal sense. He would... Uh he would experience, he and his family would experience more joy and more peace and more tan tangible temporal blessing in their life if they would. Tangible temporal blessing. Tangible temporal blessing. Let me just make sure that we're working with the same definition of temporal here. Relating to worldly as opposed to spiritual affairs. Okay, so it's something that's real. I, okay, my guy. What does a blessing look like? What does a real blessing look like? How would I figure out what a real blessing is compared to, say, circumstance? Or hell, if we want to layer, you know different bullshit beliefs on top of one another, then cool. Uh, how about I ask you, how would you tell the difference between a blessing and luck? Luck doesn't exist. Luck isn't a thing. People don't have luck. Randomness happens, and humans with our pattern-recognizing brains look at a series of outcomes, and we isolate the outcomes we either like a lot or dislike a lot and say, oh, I'm a lucky person, or oh, I am an unlucky person. Because we don't have any other mechanisms there. Our brains are not wired better. Luck doesn't exist. But if we're going to be talking about temporal blessings, then how do we tell the difference between luck and a blessing? What do, we, what do we do here? I don't understand. I don't know what we're actually looking at here. Confirmation bias is probably the only thing we have. Worshipped Allah privately and did not bring reproach upon the nation publicly uh, so that the nation could continue to receive the blessings of the triune God. Yeah, again, like, how do I tell what receiving the blessings looks like? I don't, I don't know. But... Uh, I, I think, yeah, confirmation bias is the only thing we've got there. That's the only way we'd be able to tell what a what a blessing is. Is just, Oh, it's not that you're lucky, it's that you're blessed. Oh, it's not that you're skilled, it's that you're talented. Oh, it's not this. Like, we're going we're gonna to insert whichever word makes us feel infinitely better about the situation and not actually, like, care about reality here.
and, th and that's it. Like, he's using, it's in your best interest for me to be a religious bigot. That's what he's doing. He's saying in, it's in your best interest, Mr. Muslim, uh, for me to have more power in the nation than you. It is better for you, actually, because my God, who is somehow categorically different from your God and somehow more verifiable than your God, will give blessings to us in a way that I can't really describe. But trust me, bro, they're happening. It's stupid. It's just pure stupidness. I think we will be covering a little more of Joel in the future because the things that come out of his mouth are uh, entertainingly dumb. That said, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, everybody, insert into video tagline here. Hey, just wanted to give a quick thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who help keep me afloat and help keep this channel going. YouTube and Twitch are wonderful platforms, but at the end of the day, stability is not one of their strong suits. If you want to support my channel, then obviously Patreon is one of the best ways of doing that. Link is in the description. But I do want to personally thank everybody who has contributed to the channel. Those people would be Red Joker, Purple Poundini, Gemption, Britzkrieg, Jupe the Malignant, Michael, Ravalern, Mabity Babity, Astral Frontier, Autumn and Angel, Nixie Chan, Mark Anthony, Victorian Alchemist, Sagitt I'm not saying the last part of that, and you know that. Arctan Arc Lassier, Curatorian, Dren Hadamata, Jordan M, John L, Lord Bleck, Smiling Game Master, and Fire Shard and everyone else who supports my channel and lets me do what I do full time. This is a dream job of mine that I never believed that I would be able to take full time, and with your help, I've been able to do it. So thank you so, so very much for that. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you all enjoy, and I hope you all are having a wonderful time. I will see you all in the next one, hopefully.